Dani, ahorita le haces un crank, yo, yo me toca. Mira, come on. Look at the rocker arm, the push rod, and the valves. When the engine is moving, in some moments, this valve open and close. Dale. You see? This one is opening, this one is closing, opening, closing, opening. Turn off the, the switch. The red one. Turn off the red one. Thank you. Yeah? One is opening, other is closing. Okay, look. The push rod is connected with the cam chop. The cam chop is here. Move the push rod and the valve open and close. You have the valve, you have the spring. You see, the valve with the spring and the push rod, and this is the rocker arm. When the engine is running, in the bottom in the oil pan is located the oil pump. Pump the oil, the oil lubricates the bearings on the crank, bearings of the cam, and the oil goes up until this point, lubricate all of this, and return into the oil pan for gravity. Once again, in the bottom is located the oil pump. Submerge it in the oil pan. Good? When the engine is running, the oil pump, pump it oil at high pressure. Pass for the bearings of the crank, bearings of the cam, lubricate all of this, and goes up. The maximum point is this one. Lubricate those rocker arms and go down for gravity. So, it's, uh, the oil comes from the push rods? The oil comes in the, the push rod. Give me one push rod. It's hollow. Thank you. No, here, here, over there. In, in, in so the, the, the here, yeah, thank you. Look at this. Look at the push rod. Look at the push rod. Is, is hollow. It's hollow. Ah, the oil enter over there, goes here, enter here, lubricate, and also the oil is here, lubricate all of this and return for gravity. Oh, the oil enter here because the oil pump at high pressure pumped the oil here. But later we are going to talk about the lubrication system. Today is only to understand that the engine is lubricated always. Good? Yes. And uh, you know what is the function of this? The cam chop is here. Yeah, with the lows moving, bam, 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 bam. And this one is connected with the rocker arm. I move the rocker arm like this, like this, like this, and the valve open and close, open and close. I have a question. Look at this. Look. You see? This rocker arm is free. And this one is compressing this valve. Which valve is open? This one or this one? The one, one that's compressed. That one is open. And this one is <coughs> closed. Close. Ah, when the valve is closed, <coughs> what happened with the rocker arms? Push it down. They are loose. When the valve is open, what happened with the rocker arm? Is, is, this one is? This one is, the valve is, open. Open. valve is open. closed. Open. And this one, the valve is open. open. You understand? Okay, other thing. When the valve is open, the spring is compressed or extended? Compressed. When the valve is open, the spring is compressed. When the valve is closed, the spring is extended. Quiz question, final exam question. When the valve is closed, the spring is compressed. Excuse me, extended. And when the valve is open, the spring is compressed. Great? Right? And the oil circulate here. How does the valve look when it's open? Is it just like pushed down a little bit or is it slanted? Yeah, it's pushed down. Push down a little bit? We are going to start the other engine and we are going to see how the oil goes up and lubricate everything and goes down for gravity. Está bueno? Y'all got to wear I said to you, probably you don't know nothing about the electricity and engines, but you learn Spanish, okay?
Yeah. It's a course of Spanish. For free. <laughs> Danny learned Spanish, yeah, with me. <laughs> okay, guys, look at this. We have rocker arms. We have, this is the camp chop. Hey, this is a great question. <coughs> look at this. This head, the camp chop, the camp chop is on the head. What is the name of this head? According with the book. Cam head, because the cam shaft is located on the head. Where is located the cam shaft on that engine? In the block. And with push rods, move the rocker arms. Oh, in this engine, the rocker arms are directly with the cam shaft. The cam shaft is here. Is clear? Mm -hmm. We're going to check that one. Disassembly the head, and we are going to explain the procedure that we are going to do in the project. Immediately, we remove the head. We are going to check. We are going to check if the head is is straight. Immediately, yeah. Immediately, we remove the head. We are going to remove the rocker. Excuse me, the push rod, and we are going to verify. We are going to verify if all the push rods are are straight. Straight. Hey, my friends, what happened if I found that two push rods bended? This is an indication of what. For example, pay attention. I removed the head, and I found that the cylinder number two full of raw water, corroded, and the piston lag. Oh. How should be the rocker, the push rods on those on that cylinder? Bend. 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 Bend No? The other push rods, good, 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 and this one, bend it. Why? Because the, can't because the piston no move, and the valve try to push it open. And bend it. This is a fuse. This is a fuse to protect the head and the piston. To avoid that the, the valve open in the moment when the piston is on top of the center and destroy the engine. That element bend it and avoid that. So the engine will still run if that one's bent, does that piston won't work? If, 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 if you have problem in that, in that cylinder. This is a fuse. It's hollow and it's soft metal to bend it easily. Excuse me? Are they cheap? Yeah. It's uh, like a 20, 25 dollar each one. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Don't forget, immediately you remove the push rod. Verify that all of them are straight. And be careful. Before you remove the push rod, in some engines, 
I think that this and this, the push rods for intake are longer than the push rods for exhaust. Ah, be careful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, a little shorter. Let me have a Oh, that one is intake. Okay, in a plastic bag, intake, push rods, all the intakes. In other plastic bag, exhaust, push rods. Okay, my friend, for the next class, I need plastic uh, zip locks, Sharpie, your own Sharpie, and uh, a lot of uh, zip locks in different sizes. You because we are. One, we'll provide you one at ten dollars a bag. Yeah. 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 I'll do it for five. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, in the in the dollar, you you, you find a lot of uh, plastic. Uh, you want this for like tomorrow? Like the really big ones, like the four ones. Uh, like the four ones. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. If you want it, you want a laboratory tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Okay. We we can start tomorrow to disassemble the head. The, the head. No problem. But uh, at seven o'clock, bring your plastic bags, your tools. Now we are going to talk about the tools with Danny and your brain. And, uh, and the brain. <laughs> okay. So project is always brain. Tomorrow I'll bring the bag. Yeah. Bring the, the bag. Uh, no no flip flops. Uh, no sandals. Uh, yeah, in the shop, no flip flops. Okay, guys. You remove that one and you verify that. After that, you remove the, the rocker arm uh, frame. And after that, the head. With the head is out, we are going to remove the valves, the springs, and we are going to do the service on the valves and the spring. Give me two minutes. I'm going to organize the table with Danny. Yes, so we are going to explain the process. Now we are going to give a lot of information about the head. This tool can be used when the head is out, like this. But uh, when the head is on place, on the engine, on the block, I can remove the springs with this. This is in, in a special situation when I need to replace the seals. Right now I am going to explain where are located the seals and for what reason you need, in some cases, replace the seals. You can use that one if the head is bolted on place. Or this one, if the head is out. <coughs> right now it's easy because the head is out and uh, we are going to use the tool with Danny to remove the bar. Okay, this one Danny. We are going to, <laughs> the most difficult. Okay, that one in front of the head. You see? And now with this, okay. Uh, we have the magnet? Uh, I would. Look. Hey guys, pay attention. Look, this is the valve. And there are a couple of uh, pins of retainers or, uh, or uh, keepers. When the spring is compressed, those, those keepers are out. And with the magnet, you can recover. Be careful, if one of those fall in the ground, stop until you find those, those keys. If not, the project finished. We need to keep those, those keepers in a plastic bag per each cylinder. Right now we are going to talk about the organization of the tables. Okay, with this I compress the valve. <laughs> Some pros and X in there, can you? <laughs> okay, look at this. Look at here where the, the keys are located. No, because here it was wrong. Can you spray some corrosion X up in that? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We need to compress better. Let me bring another. That's what we're making though. Everything else. Yeah, this one's so yeah, you see where it holds the valve, I mean the, the top of the spring, mm -hmm. so it compresses as it pushes this spring down, the keepers, it's almost like a, a cone shape, so that way when it pulls up, it locks it in place. 
So you lose that. Fuck. The, um, you be that guy the, in that class, and that we we'll be talking about in the classroom. The things you're talking about is in this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's in there. And then when it push back, it falls yeah. out. Yeah. So when you when you compress it, it's gonna fall out. Sometimes it doesn't. That's why we need the magnet. But once when you put it back in, the same way you press this in, you set it in there, and you. Yeah. <laughs> What's that tool called? Uh, this is a uh, uh, ring compressor. I mean, not ring compressor, yeah, but uh, it's spring valve spring, compressor. Uh, spring valve. No, no, no. Okay. 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 All right, here, this one in the face of the valve. This one in the face of the valve. Okay, look. Look at the keys. You see the keys? And now the valve is compressed. Look at the keys. The keys are are conic. Both of them enter here. You see? Mm -hmm. And after that, when you release the spring, lock lock the valve. You? Okay, and now look. Now it's free. You have the other retainer. The keys are located over there. Both of them. This is the spring. This is the valve. Look at the valve. The valve. And look at the, the seal. That seal. We are going to remove that seal. That seal is located here. And, and enter here in the button, in the in the valve guide. You see? Mm -hmm. Over there. <clears throat> Pay attention with this seal. This seal is important. We are going to analyze blue smoke. Blue smoke is for what? Oil. Excuse me? Oil. Oil in the combustion chamber. Okay, we are going, yeah, you, you imagine the, the combustion chamber, the piston, both valves, the head gasket, the head and the block, no? Okay, where is possible that the excessive amount of oil enter in the combustion chamber? That's your, the wall. Okay, Closing. if this seal is damaged, the oil enter here and penetrate. <sighs> that seal is, is, a, is an important seal. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Some people say, oh, my car is, is, is good. It's running good. No overheating, good temperature. But uh, in, in some cases, I have blue smoke. Especially if I am in the, in the parking, in the traffic, uh, and suddenly I accelerate, I see blue smoke and disappear immediately. This is normally this. Mm. Those seals. For that reason, in those Mickey Mouse dealers of cars, they, with, a, with this tool, remove the springs and replace those seals. And right now, no blue smoke. But this is temporary, okay? Those are the seals of the valve. How can I remove the, the valve, the spring of the valve with this, if the head is on place? Look. This is the valve. And you see that this one, they have one lower than the other one because the spring is elliptical. Okay, we are going to... Dude, for real. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, these are ballistic rays. Wait, so what did you just say? How it was temporary. How is it temporary? What do you mean? Replacing those seals. Oh, because what happens is more than likely the valves. Um, oh, are, oh, okay. Gotcha. So could the valve drop in? Oh, yeah, you screw up. is out come on the camera look and now with this okay one is out Okay, one is out, the other one is out, and now the spring is compressed out, and I am ready, I am ready to remove the seal and remove the bag. What do you do about that spring? How do you, you have a loaded bag? That's, that's a like gun. <laughs> no. You open the exactly. Really? Okay, and you have no fear. for each cylinder will we will be organized. We have uh, the seal and both the case and the valve per cylinder. because the valve is corroded. The valve is corroded. Okay, and uh, after that, you have this, you have this, you have this, organize a cylinder one, cylinder two in a table with a carboard and cylinders labeled, no? Okay, and that one, we are going to uh, organize with Danny the, the wire wheel to clean with the wire wheel, the valve, everything. And we are going to verify the measurements, the measurements in this way. You when gotta, we, you gotta make sure those are straight no. as well, right? Yeah. It looks a little bit. Yeah, let me explain. We are going to put organized cylinder, 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 and we are going to put all of this. And we are going to check with the caliper, the length. Of, of the springs, and we are going to copy in the paper. Cylinder one, 2.74, 72, 2.73, yeah, all the dimensions. And we are going to verify if uh, one spring is compressed, it's shorter in comparison with the other ones. Let me explain. For example, in that engine that was abandoned for 10 years, how many valves stay open and how many valves are compressed? Probably half, half and half, no? What happened with the valves that uh, were open for 10 years? The spring was compressed. What happened when you try to crank the engine 10 years later? What happened with those springs? They extend complete? No. Probably not. And probably they break in the moment that you crank. We are going to verify when we have all the springs out if the length of all of them is equal. If not, you need to replace the spring. Okay, we are going to verify the total length. We are going to verify this one, especially in the middle, the area that is moving, no? We are going to verify with the caliper and copy. And after that, we are going to analyze. Oh, 
this ball is a little shorter in comparison with the other ones. We need to replace that ball. And also, we are going to verify this end. Let me show to you something. Make sure you bring a pad and paper so you can write that information down. Bring, bring your own Sharpie for tomorrow. If you use my markers with this, I am going to break your head, okay? <laughs> because this is my marker. Bring your Sharpie. <laughs> All right, look at this. When, now, Danny and me, we are going to sit the balls again on the, on the, on the, on the head. But uh, if in this head, the people try to sit the balls 10 times, probably the amount of metal here is gone. You don't have enough metal to sit and sit the metal. Look at this, you see that angle and that? Mm -hmm. If you try to sit the balls several times, what happened with this distance? Shorter. Reduce, reduce. And suddenly you don't have enough material and you need to replace the balls and replace the seat of the balls. The minimum distance recommended is one millimeter. This is the key word. One millimeter, this, this distance is the minimum. Of course, this is for a big engine, but in medium and small engines, one millimeter is, is the rule. Okay, great. Where, where did that come off of? Excuse me? Where did that come off of? Where? Uh, uh, it's a Wasilla, uh, the biggest cargo ship engine. Uh, Wasilla is located in Fort uh, Lauderdale in David. I don't know if we can visit, but uh, the visit on Wasilla is not nice because everything is closed and you need to walk like this and don't touch nothing. And only, uh, that's, I don't like that visit. Sure it's nice. Because everything is secret. Uh, Okay, but uh, I have five of uh, our students working over there in Wasilla. Okay, right now, don't forget, we are going to take this measurement, we are going to take this one, this one, and copy in the paper, and we are going to analyze all of those. Uh, and uh, be careful with the, with the, the, the seals of the valve. And now, we are going to sit we are going to sit the valves against the head. When you remove all the valves with mineral spirit and brush, you clean the head completely. And uh, with the wire wheel, you remove to sit the valves. Right now, we are going to sit the valves with that. Let me, one minute, we prepare conditions. Look. In some cases, let me bring the other tool, and I demonstrate that the other tool is Mickey Mouse. I, I clean the valve with the wire wheel, and uh, I clean the seat of the valve. Look, that area where the valve is. You see that? That's the seat of the valve. Normally, this is with a carbon deposit, or it's a little dented or cracked. With the lapping procedure, we are going to verify how is that surface. If the surface is in good condition, or if the surface is corroded like this. Uh, this is basically some paper liquid. You see? It's a, it's, a valving, uh, it's a valve grinding compound, lapping compound. It's some paper in liquid, in cream. Mm. That's good. No? Blackberry flavor. Can't be and uh, you, 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 you find those one in the same specification like the sandpaper, 800, 1200, uh, 250. Great. Yeah, it's according with the amount of uh, sand over there. Same thing used for putting the prop on. Uh, you remember when we lap the propeller? Yeah. It's with this, exactly with this. Okay, we are going to lap, we are going to lap that surface against the seat. And we are going to create a perfect seal. What is the meaning of that? That at the end, when the valve closed, the valve closed perfect, and you have excellent compression. Is clear? Good? All right, we are going to do that procedure. Ah, okay, normally, uh, the people say, okay, with this technique, 
with this technique uh, oh sorry it's here maybe in a couple of pieces of wood hey <laughs> <laughs> Papi, check the videos because in the videos I have this explained. Everything that I explain here is explained in the videos. This is only a. Uh, No, in the table, in the table. Great common I've called it. I don't know, but they have a surprise. You've been on GoPro Studio? Yep. It is the easiest editing software on the planet. I've never seen it for you. It, what is like, it, GoPro 9? Like, smart AI that like detects the like, dead space in your video. It'll, it'll make a 15 minute video ready. for you. Okay. Like DGI is well, only gonna put it in the world. It's super short for me. And it's the case. It takes like all the best parts. I don't know how to know the best parts. Look, some people say, okay, I want to use that tool uh, to sit the buzz. And the people say, okay, I am going to put the, the cream over there. You see? The liquid. The liquid sandpaper. This is the official camarographer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the salary is good. Yeah. All right, and they said, okay, I introduced the valve. Hammer. Okay, it's that one, okay. I introduced the valve, and right now, with that, with this Mickey Mouse tool, Special Grease 101. Yeah. They, they, probably in a small engines, works. But uh, in big bulbs, this one, Damn, this is to prepare chocolate. So what's the answer? No? I, know what the answer. I don't like that one. I prefer this one. I prefer this one, this method. Look, you put the cream, you introduce the valve, and after that, we are going to use, we prepare a piece of hose with that metal. Uh, we introduce here in the drill, and with the drill, Jesus. and it's better. <laughs> okay, look at this. You need, you need room here. Oh, one second. Look at this. You need room to move the valve like this. If you put the hose pretty close to the head, you don't have a space to do that. Okay. We are going to try it. Uh, okay, now. Now, with this, you added, you added some amount, it's a little, it's a little. Some people destroyed one bucket of this in one bath. How much? How much is No, it's not because it's how much, it's because. You wasted, no need, not necessary. In the bath. All right, and now, look at this. And periodically, you added more cream. That's yeah. This is for five minutes. Did you do it too yeah. much? Excuse me? Did you like do that too yeah. much? Yeah. How are you? Doing? Doing? And, and, and periodically, you remove the valve. You remove the valve 
and you verify. You verify with mineral spirit. You clean the valve. You clean the valve. You verify that the surface is perfect, no dents, no nothing. You clean that area, the seat of the valve. You clean the seat of the valve and you verify the surface. You see? Okay. Yeah, make sure it's all even. You have a great, great clean area here. Probably we need more. We need more because uh, I have a lot of, uh, you see, spots over there. We are going to introduce the valve again. Bam, 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 bam. Once again, I clean. Oh, I need a little more. And here I have a spot. When both of them are like a mirror, you finish with this and you continue with the other one, the other one, the other one. Pay attention. When you finish, when you finish, this is the procedure to verify if everything is the head. Okay, look. When you finish, follow me. This one is finished. This one is finished. This one, this one, this one, this one. You put all of them over there. You clean the head. And Mr. Rodriguez and me, we are going to check this. Pay attention. This valve is connected with those exhaust, 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 exhaust. And this one is intake, yeah? Okay. And we are going to do this. We are going to add gasoline here, a little amount of gasoline. The gasoline penetrates a lot. If this one don't sit properly, you have gasoline going out here. If this one don't sit properly, you have gasoline going here. And we are going to check with the flashlight. Oh, gasoline, Papa. No good. That one, no good. No good and no good. Once again. Go ahead. Hey, Mr. Lopez, one, yes, one second. Bing, 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 bing. And now gasoline, gasoline, gasoline. Oh, perfect, 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 perfect. Now, putting back the springs, the seat, the keys, and the head is ready. That's the project number one for tomorrow. You like it? Yeah. Okay. With this procedure, you are 200% sure that the valve closed perfect and you don't have leaks. Remember, in diesel engine and a small leak, no compression. This is the only reason that I, for what I want to use a gun. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, that's the only reason. I got a lot more. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Good. You enjoy? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, the people never pay attention on detail like this. Uh, the people, uh, the people uh, say, "No, my head is good. My head is flat. I put it back the head." Oh, my friend, you remove the head in your engine? Yes. The weekend with a couple of friends, uh -huh, a lot of work. And, uh, but what's good? I replaced the head gasket. Why you replace the head gasket? Oh, because the engine was overheated. How you know that the head is in good condition? No, Mr. Lopez, because the head looks perfect. But uh, you check with the ruler? Oh, no, I don't know. Ah, OK. 100% sure if the engine was overheated, the head is? Uh, excuse me, you remove the the and the spring and you lose time. You lose your money. And you lose the money of the head gasket and everything. Because uh, in two weeks you have the same problem. Mm. Two weeks, oh we're hitting. Yeah. This is the job on the head. Good? We are going to do similar jobs on the cylinders. We are going to hunt the cylinders. And uh, it's a nice project, no? Is that, that, that tool thing right there? Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, we are going to use that tool. But uh, this is the tool for uh, the first project. Yeah, we are going to use that tool in the next <laughs> to hunt the cylinders and polish the cylinder like a mirror and replace the piston rings. I hope that in the future you can do that in your boat. Let me explain something. We call these dingleberries. Yeah, because if you take too, you do it too much, you take you just take too much surface area off, and then you're out. Then you gotta take the measurements of the. Of the so I won't be the same from that. Well, but then the rings, you have to change the rings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have to oversize the compressions, the symptoms. Timmy we'll Turner. We'll go more into detail with that. Zane. Look, we're those, concentrating on those, those elements no are this, no this, this the rings with on, uh, lead. Ceiling lead. Uh, lead, Space the melting point is too low. This is lead with some paper. Good, no? Okay. Look at this. In the future, my, my friend, those techniques will be money for you in the future. Believe me. Pay attention. Suppose that you receive one engine that a salt water enter in one cylinder. Of course, you remove the head and you find that uh, in the second cylinder there, there, there is uh, water, salt water and corrosion. Okay. Because this is a marine engine, probably I can recover the engine re preparing only that cylinder, the second cylinder. Okay, I remove the head, I send the head to the machine shop, they replace the valve, the spring, ta ta ta, or I do the, the job like today. I see the valve, I replace the spring, the, 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 the seals, you can order the seals and you replace those seals. How much is it presented to the shop? No, it's not expensive. For example, for the head of the yellow engine, uh, it's uh, $350. That's How much would you charge to do a job like that? I know. Be careful with this, my friend. And uh, Danny is better than me in that. Uh, you can... Don't don't charge more than 20% in part to the customer. Yeah. No? Well, as far as like if you were to, if you were to send that out, you just add 20% of whatever they, they sell. Uh, like they say 300 be 360 to the customer. Mm -hmm. The administration. Yeah, because you're not doing anything, you're just making a little extra money because yeah. you got them to contact and you're, and you're more likely you either have to take it to them or they pick it up, either way, you're entitled to make your 20%. Anything more than that, you're wrong. But we we got money in the label. Okay. Okay. So they, they CMC it flat or is it? Yeah, they, yeah, they well, they, they, they spec it out and they make sure everything They expect with Magna Plus and with liquid penetrant, check the book, the, the metals, if the head is good or not. And uh, if it's not good, they call to you. Hey, my friend, your head is, is, is cracked. You need, you, the thing is, is when you're in the field, you're doing so many different things in the field, sometimes it's not worth, okay, now i got to dedicate time. Unless you have time. But if i got like five jobs going, I send it out. And I can keep working here. So even though you're not making as much money, but you make 20% or so something, so you can keep doing that. And then when that comes in, what other project, now you can jump on that. You, you gotta have the dedication. It's almost like like call the cash. Flow. This is in a marina in your business. And if you do that, you don't lose time with this in your business. Now I am going to explain what happened in the middle of the ocean if yeah. you have that problem, that difference. Uh, Danny, what about the label? For example, when you replace the head in a in a Mercruiser in board 5.7. Yeah, it's a lot How of labor. It's a lot of labor. You're talking about probably four or five hours pulling the heads off. So More. Them out, two, people. two people. Two people. Two people. Two people. Ten hours. Uh, $100 per hour, it's a lot of money, no? Only to replace the head gasket and replace the head. You can get a pool intake, yeah, it's a little bit more. It's yeah, a lot of work, okay. Intake. But now you are in the middle of the ocean, and in this engine, and you find water in the second cylinder. You remove the head, you check with the ruler that the head is flat. Okay, if the head is flat, I clean the head, and I find with my magnifier that is not cracked, I am going to prepare a table with some paper and with the some paper over there, I move at the head and I clean the head, the surface of the head. Is that clear? And after that, you have the surface of the head completely clean. Good? Okay, now, you check the cylinders. 
Ah, that cylinder, the, the piston number two, is corroded. But the rest of the motor, the rest of the engine is in good condition. I am going to remove, I am going to lift the engine in the engine room with the stand. Danny and me, we are going to explain the process. You lift the engine. And from the bottom, you remove the oil pan and you push out the piston, that piston number two. And now with this and this, you hunt the cylinder and you replace the piston rings or the piston if it's necessary and you recover that cylinder and the head and you put it back the head, connect everything and start the engine again. Yes, you can recover an engine if you have one or two cylinder damage working in the engine room. You need to be organized clean the area, not any prepared uh, condition, the table, anytime the Anytime you're rebuilding anything, whether it's a transmission, it's a drive, motor, have a clean surface area and no one bothers you. Yeah. Music, air, ventilation, a couple of coronas, and that's it. <laughs> Takes the edge off. Yeah. Yes, you can recover the engine. One cylinder. Oh, no. In, the, in that cylinder, when I hunt with this, I found that crack that cylinder. No problem. I remove the liner and I replace the liner for new one with new piston. I recover that cylinder because it's a marine engine with with wet liners and you can remove the liners. Nice, no? That's different. In your car, no. In your car you need to send the block to the machine shop. Bam, 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 bam. This information of today is a lot of money for you. Good. Question. A question? Mm -hmm. So when you have you put on, on the uh, liner, but when you put a new ring, it's gonna be like it, it's gonna be different size, right? Okay. And We're going to explain later, later that process. Later okay. uh, we have three measurements: standards, plus ten, plus twenty, and plus forty. Okay. Uh, ten is ten uh, hundreds of uh, inches, it's a, it's a little, 20 is 20 hundreds of inches, yeah? Uh, in automotive applications, you can, you can hunt the cylinders three times, plus 10, plus 20, and plus 40. In some cases, plus 60, depending on the thickness of the walls okay. in automotive. In marine, maximum two. The idea is not reduce too much the metal in the cylinder walls, no? And also in marine, it's easy to replace the liners and you keep the engine standard all the time. Later, we are going to explain that. In marine application, try to keep the engine in the best condition, standard. We were talking about efficiency yesterday. If you're honing the cylinder, is it gonna drop efficiency by a lot? No, no, no. No. You're just cleaning the surface area. You're taking a little bit of surface area, but no. No, you you increase the performance. I mean, if okay. there's a if there's a big you know score in the yeah. cylinder, then you just have to replace it. Okay. You punch it out. Sometimes if they have seals you can replace the sleeves in the block. You can't. Yeah. There's no. You can't. Add material. You can't add material. There's no. 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 It's the same. same thing. Uh, can, can, can I have that liner? Uh, some manufacturers, they say slips mm -hmm. or cylinder lines. Okay. But it's the same. It's exactly the same. And uh, look at this. Suppose that uh, I found that this had bended. We sent to the machine shop and they cut it. And they return to you the heads. Be careful with this. You need to ask to the machine shop, hey, my friend, how much material you remove? Ah, 0 0.02, 0, 0 something. You think that it's a good idea use the original head gasket? No, 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 no. You need a thicker head gasket to compensate that because they remove material. What happens if you cut it material on the head but you use the, the original head gasket, thinner. What happened right now in the in, in the combustion chamber? You have more, more, more.
more compression because that area right now is a little lower. When the piston finish, compress and probably you have excessive temperature. And you run the engine and in two minutes, three minutes, high temperature, high temperature, high temperature. Hey, what, what happened? I replaced the that. New head gasket. You use the same head gasket, the same original uh, thickness? Yes. No, you need a thicker head gasket. Normally, professional machine shops, they call to you and, and say, hey, I sent to you the, the, the head repair with the new head gasket with the new thickness. It is a good matching shop for marine application. All right, be careful with that. High temperature, high temperature. Happen is is excessive compression in the in the in the combustion chamber. 